Lesson 4-6, Graphs of Sine and Cosine. Right, if we have y equals sine x, where x is our angle, get a graph that looks like this. Notice it goes up and down and up and down and keeps repeating. So we call that periodic because it repeats. It starts at zero, so it goes through zero, zero. The amplitude, which is from the middle to the top, or the middle to the bottom, is one. And the period, the period is one full cycle, which is one up and one down. is 2 pi, which is a full circle. Cosine is very similar, only cosine starts at the top. Cosine is 0, is 1. But the amplitude is still 1, and the period is still 2 pi. Notice there are five key points on each of these. For sine, the zero, zero, and then the next two x-intercepts that are in the period. So we go from zero to two pi, halfway in between is our other intercept. Halfway between the intercepts is our maximum, which will be at pi over two, and our minimum, which will be at three pi over two. For cosine, you have a maximum at zero, so we have a maximum at the period two pi. Halfway in between, we have the minimum. Halfway between those are the x-intercepts at pi over two and three pi over two. Those are the key points, and those will be the main points you'll be graphing when you graph sine and cosine. Of course, like with any other graph, there are transformations. And so we have A, B, but instead of H and K, for some reason, for trigonometry, they use C and D. A is the amplitude, which is also the vertical stretch. B is our horizontal shrink, so that will actually change the period. The period for sine and cosine is 2 pi divided by B. C is a horizontal shift, so it's left, shifting it left or right. And we'll call that a phase shift, which is actually C divided by B because of the way the transformations work. And if C is positive, we're going towards the right. And D is a vertical shift up and down, so the midline, that middle line, will be Y equals D. 2 times sine of x. Well, this looks like sine except for we have an a. So our amplitude is 2. So I decide how we're going to do this graph. So because of the way the key points work, we're st uh, and we're doing sine, sine starts at 0, so we'll start there at 0, 0. I would go over and maybe call this pi and that 2 pi, so it fits nicely. So this would be negative pi, negative 2 pi. For sine, halfway between 0 and the period is the other x-intercept. And then we need some heights. If I call this 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, the amplitude is 2, so we'll go up to 2 instead of 1. We'll go down to negative 2. So you can see we have this nice little graph. But then you just repeat the pattern. Since it's periodic, we repeat the pattern. Make sure that your graph is all nice and curved. And there we are. 
All right, let's graph y equals cosine of x over two. Well, this would be the same thing as cosine of one half x. So what we have is a b. So we know b is one half. Well, b is the horizontal shrink and changes our period. Period is two pi over b. So it'll be two pi over a half. So divide by a fraction by multiplying by the reciprocal and we get four pi. So this time if I label it, instead of going pi and two pi, maybe I'll go two pi and four pi. So it's pi, two pi, three pi. That way I know it's all gonna fit on my graph. And we have a vertical scale. All right, cosine starts at the amplitude, which is one in this case. And then at the period, it's back at the amplitude. Halfway in between, it's at a minimum. And halfway between those are the x-intercepts. So we have a graph like that, and just repeat the pattern. Just make sure your graph is nice and curved. There we go, cosine of x over two. All right, let's graph y equals two sine of x minus pi over two. So we have an A and we have a C. So we know our amplitude is two and we know C is pi over two because remember it's x minus C. All right, so what's that do? Well, that changes our phase shift. So our phase shift is C over B b in this case is 1, so it is just pi over 2 over 1. Since it's positive, it is going towards the right. All right, um, our period is still 2 pi, so maybe we'll call that pi and 2 pi. So I just essentially count over four spaces, and that's whatever the period is. That way I make sure that it's evenly spaced for my special points. All right, so sine starts at zero, zero. However, I am shifted pi over two to the right. Well, pi over two is just one square. So I'm going one square to the right. And then I have the other x intercept at the period, which was two pi but I'm shifted over to the right, pi over two. Halfway in between is the other x-intercept. Halfway in between are the amplitudes, which are two. And just repeat the pattern. Like that. All right, let's put it all together. This time we have an A, a B, a C, and a D. So when our amplitude is negative, negative, that means it's upside down. We have our B is pi, which means our period, which is two pi over B, be two pi over pi, which is two. So, I'm going to count this as one and that as two. So I always put my period four spaces away. That way the key points fit nicely. C is pi. Our phase shift is um, C over B. 
Actually, c is negative pi. So it would be pi, negative pi over pi, because it's minus a negative. So it's negative 1. So I'm going 1 towards the left. And then d is 1, which means our mid line is y equals 1. So actually, let's go ahead and put the midline on here at y equals 1. All right, it's sine, so it starts at 0, so it starts on the midline. But we're shifted 1 to the left. The period was at 2, but I'm shifted 1 to the left. The other intercept is halfway in between. All right, our amplitude then is, we'd normally have a highest point, but our amplitude is negative. So instead of going up, it'll go down a half and then up a half. So it's backwards, it's upside down. Then all you have to do is repeat the pattern. Repeat the pattern, make sure it's a nice curve, and there we go.